What's going on YouTube Metal Complex here and today I want to do something that I probably should have done a long time ago and that is a how-to video specifically how to center the blade on your folding knife there is nothing more annoying I mean arguably in my opinion there's nothing more annoying than buying a knife you build up all the anticipation it gets to your you know your place and then you get it out and you go over in your checklist and then checking all the stuff and you get down to the centering and uh, it's off centered and you're like ah and all that anticipation, all that, you know, the just wanting it to be perfect, it gets there. And, you know, whether you spent 50 bucks on it or 500 bucks on it or more, right? It's just that, that sinking feeling of imperfection. And then you go, you're like, I don't want to mess with it. Should I send it back? I don't want to send it back because I'm going to wait, right? Most of the time, you can make a simple adjustment. Um, a few steps can make that centering perfect and at the same time, uh, you'll still have good action and it will lock up solid. That's what we're going to try to achieve here today. I'm going to show you guys how to do that. First off, I want to say that this is not a guaranteed fix. There's a lot of things that can play a role in whether or not this actually works out. First and foremost, if you've got a knife that's $5, if it's a $5 knife, this is not definitely not a guaranteed fix because the knife wasn't created with perfect tolerances to begin with, or at least that was not in mind, right? It was just kind of slapped together. You get what you pay for, so this may or may not work. Second off, depends on the washer setup. If you've got nylon washers, it's, everything's going to be a little bit mushy, so it may not work as well, right? Especially if it's a less expensive knife. Phosphor bronze washers and bearings tend to work better, right? Or it's easier to center a blade on those setups. Also, if you've been beating on your knife for 10 years and everything's bent, this probably isn't gonna work, right? So that's gonna be the case. If you've got a knife, the, the uh, knives that I have actually done this on where it's actually worked, right? Uh, liner locks like the Kaiser Dome in here, and this is actually gonna be the one that we're gonna be performing surgery on today. Axis locks or able locks like on the uh, Ritter Hogue here. Uh, those will, this should work on them. Uh, compression locks like the uh, Spyderco Para 3 uh, or PM2 that you can see here, this one is well, it didn't look centered, but it actually is centered. Uh, you know, another other liner locks, like if, if you're watching this because you've got a rat and it's off center, it'll work on that. I've had more experience centering hinder knives from generation three and generation four. Any of you watching this because you've got a hinder that's off center, fear not. I've centered more hinder blades with this than anything else. Any frame locks, by the way, for the most part, be about the same. And then of course your sub frame locks or uh, sub liner locks, whatever you want to call those should be just fine. There are other locks out there that I have not used this technique on. I have no idea whether or not it'll work, right? There's going to be a lot of factors. Here's some stuff that you're going to want to have with you. Um, a good Torx driver set like this Wea bit selector, and then a good magnetic driver like this Wea magnetic driver. A quarter inch is great. These are both super inexpensive, and they're going to be um, available down in my description. I'll show you guys real quick. If you open up the description in any of my videos, you can see it shows my Redbubble store, my Patreon if you want to support my channel, and then I've got my sister channel, Silent Complex, if you don't want to hear my voice, but you still want to look at knives, and then I've got tons of like knives and a whole bunch of stuff here. But if you scroll down here to your knife maintenance stuff, you can see here we a quarter inch uh, Torx bit selector. You can choose that right there. Um, so you're gonna want, gonna want to uh, have something like that. Also get yourself some, I know this is a red container, but blue. 242 Loctite is actually what this is called. Why? Because red Loctite will seal everything in place and it'll be a pain to get it apart. You want it to be together and you want it to stay that way, but not to the point where you can't get it apart. So 242 Loctite or thread lockers, what you're gonna want. You're gonna want a piece of notebook paper that is roughly, and I say roughly, I mean that, like five by five, five inches by five inches because you're gonna fold it up. I would suggest having another set, another quarter inch set, preferably because those bits are everywhere. But if you don't, that's fine. Just another one, just in case you have a pivot that's got, um, uh, you know, like um, an adjustment uh, head on both sides, you might need to hold one in place if it's a free spinning pivot. So it's a good idea to have another one. If you've got a hinder, you know, you might want the spanner tool. If you don't want to pay 80 bucks for the spanner tool, get yourself a quarter inch magnetic driver and then go down to your local hardware store and buy a quarter inch um, spanner tool for about a buck fifty and then if you don't want to mess up the pivot on your hinder just use a penny because the outside of it is copper and it's much so uh, much softer than the steel on the uh, pivot we're going to move this stuff out of the way because they really were just examples of knives that i know for sure this will work on and we're going to focus on the kaiser doman um the uh the knife in need of operation so i know for a fact and this is going to be the case with a lot of knives 
Um, the pivot on this guy is a T8 and the body screws are T6. I do not like T6 because they strip. We're gonna go ahead and get out a TA, T8 sorry, and a T6. I wish everything was T8, but that's we can't always get what we want, right? So anyways, guys take a look here. This is gonna be the case with most of you. Your blade is gonna be all the way over the right. Now, if you've got a blade that looks like this and it's not rubbing, it really is okay. It really, everything really is okay. But I'm gonna tell you, speaking as one of you, I understand the need to, to, for it to be perfect, right? I get that. But for those of you who wanna jump into the comments and go, it's fine, you don't even need to have it centered, everything's fine, you should just use your tools. We know, but we want it centered anyway, so save it, because we're gonna go ahead and do this. Um, let's go ahead and stick the uh, T8 in here. So here's what you're gonna do. You're gonna go ahead and back the pivot out to the point where it is definitely like backing out, right? So you can see here, we've, we've got the pivots where it's like, it's coming out. And this is gonna be uncentered, right? Um, and then also, you're gonna, in this case, we're gonna switch to the T6. Just the screws that are on the side, wherever the blade's leaning, right? It's leaning this way. So we're gonna be taking these screws right here and just backing them out a little bit to the point where they're loose, not falling out, right? But definitely not tight. You want things loose. Then what you're gonna wanna do, is take your piece of paper, and I'm not gonna be able to explain exactly how this works because I don't make knives, right? But you're gonna take it and you're gonna fold it, probably a bunch, right? You're gonna fold it, right? Finally, my air turns off so that we can hear talking. You wanna get it fairly thick, right? Not so thick, but what you're gonna to wanna to do, in this case, I want the blade to move this way, right? So I'm gonna take this piece of paper, I'm gonna pull the blade over, and I'm gonna wedge this piece of paper in beside the blade, and I'm gonna, well, did I miss? Sorry, I'm looking through the camera here. Let's. Let's turn this way. Get it on, make sure that it's on the, the right part of the blade, right? So there we go. It's in there. And then you're gonna push it up to the point where the blade is pushed over and it's not like bending, because the more you push it up, it's gonna bend everything. You don't want that to happen. You just wanna push it over enough to where the blade is touching the opposite side. You want it to be moving towards where you want it to center. The very next thing you're gonna wanna do, if you have your T6 installed, make sure you switch it back out because you're going for the pivot this time. Now, you're gonna tighten that pivot. Well, make sure the head is all the way in. Now you're gonna tighten this thing down. And I mean all the way down. Not Be careful here, because here's what you want. This is why this thing is awesome, by the way, because I can get a good grip on it and I can put torque on it, but it's controlled, right? And it's also why I like T8, because you can put some torque on this without risking stripping it, right? You want this thing cranked down, but not to the point where you can't get it undone and also not to the point where you risk. Make sure that that's all the way in there. You do not want to strip this out. You strip it out and you're done, right? You want to get it cranked down, right? So I can I can still undo that, but it's tight, right? Now, while the piece of paper is still in there, if you don't have to switch, you're lucky. If you got T8 body screws, you're in luck. Everything's going to work out just fine. If you do have to switch, make sure you switch to your T6 or whatever it is you need to switch to. Now you're gonna crank these down. If you are working with T6, be careful. You can strip the driver and you can also strip, strip the screws. You don't want that to happen. But you do need these to be fairly snug. So what we're gonna do is get these down snug. Don't over tighten them, just get them snug, right? So we're gonna keep going, just kind of feeling it out there. Okay, these are feeling pretty good. And I, I just kind of go back and forth and just do little micro tunes. You kind of learn to do these little 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 adjustments at a, a little bit at a time, right? So now what you're gonna wanna do is take this piece of paper out. And ideally, it will look just like this. And you're gonna say, complex, that's not centered, it's over to the other side. This is actually what you want, this is good. Because now what we're gonna do, right? The body screws, these are fine. You don't have to mess with these anymore, they're good. Putting those, or cranking everything down and cranking down the body screws, right? Now we've got this in a position where the body screws are gonna hold everything together. And all we're gonna do is adjust the pivot, right? Because remember, the goal here is to get the blade back to center, get the action nice and smooth, but at the same time, we want everything to be solid, solid lockup. We want everything to be nice and tight. So those body screws are doing that job because you've now screwed them all the way in with the blade being as far over as possible while we were you know, setting that or, or getting all of those threads as far in as we could, right? So now here's what we're gonna do in this case, switch back to the correct uh, head for your pivot and you're gonna slowly start undoing this. And I want you guys to watch what happens to the blade as I turn this backwards, right? You're just, I'm slowly turning it backwards and look at that. 
the blade is going to slowly come back to center. And as you're pulling that out, you're also loosening it back up. So now it will actually come out. Now, when it was cranked all the way down, let me show you guys this, crank it back down. See, blades way over to the left again. It's super tight. It's like, oh, it's off center and it's super tight. So you are loosening this, making the action better. And at the same time, it's pulling it back to center from the other direction. Why is that important? Because as it locks out, it's still tight enough to where you're not going to have blade play, ideally. Like I said, this isn't going to work for everybody, but this is essentially what we're going for. So anyways, we're going to back this out. Get it back to where it looks kind of center, and then we're gonna test it, right? Just kind of feel, okay, that, that actually feels pretty good. Let's test it. We don't have any blade play there. Let's see if I can deploy it. Yeah, I can definitely deploy it. Now, not every knife is gonna achieve a false start action. In this case, I still have to shake it pretty hard to get it down. So let's do like a, like a micro turn, right? Just a little bit. And I mean like a little bit, like this. You probably, it's probably like imperceivable, right? And then you look, is it still centered? Yeah, that looks pretty good. Is the action better? Oh yeah, the action feels really good now. I wonder if I can do like a reverse flick. Yeah, I can do a reverse flick. How's the uh, how's the uh, blade play? And there's still no blade play. You're gonna have to take my word for it. I'm sure you guys are like, whatever, my, you know. And it may be that yours still feels like it has blade play, right? Or it's not quite as smooth. What you wanna do is keep making those little, like sometimes I'll close my eyes and just feel like the slightest bit of movement because on knives that have really, really close or really tight tolerances because they're precision made items, the slightest turn can make all the difference, right? And sometimes you have to make those micro turns to get everything to do exactly what you're wanting it to do. Once you find that it is actually something that's achievable, right? Then what you want to do, and you're going to have to back this out again, then you're going to want to use your 242 Loctite. And here's exactly how much you should be using on the thread. Let me see if I can get it to focus. Well, there we go. I got some on my finger. This right here is roughly the amount that you need on your threads, right? You do not need to soak the pivot in thread lock. That will inevitably lead to nothing working correctly, right? You don't want that interacting with the outside of the pivot barrel and the blade, right? It's just meant to hold the threads in place. And if you get it on one side of the threads, just that much of a dab, as you screw that back down in there, those threads will spread it everywhere, right? So you're gonna back the pivot all the way out. And I know we just got it nice and centered. We got it nice and smooth. You're like, you're gonna make me back this all the way out. Back it all the way out. Get your dab, your single dab of thread locker on there and then put it back in and make those micro adjustments until it has exactly the right action. It's nice and centered, right? And then it feels like it's nice and solid lock up. Then close the blade, lay it somewhere where it's got plenty of ventilation. You don't wanna tuck it somewhere where there's not a lot of air because we want that thread locker to dry and let it sit there and don't mess with it at all, at all for between 24 and 36 hours or whatever it says on your container. Again, do not use red Loctite, and I would suggest not using Loctite on the screws. You're gonna be tempted, right? Because you're like, well, I want the handle screws to stay in place. Consider this. If you've got T8 screws, it's still gonna be a problem because you, know, you still have to mess with getting them back out, right? But if the pivot assembly is staying in place, it's likely that these are gonna stay put, right? If you've got T6 screws like this, you wanna put thread locker in there, what if you have to make an adjustment in the future again? Then you're working against the size of the head, the size of the bit, and the fact that they've been thread locked in there. You're much more likely to strip something out. So my opinion is, keep the thread locker off the handle screws, as tempting as it is, put it in the pivot, don't use red, use blue, 242 Loctite, even if it's a red container, if it's 242, it's the right stuff, and then let it let it, uh, let it it settle. Um, you're gonna end up with a knife that uh, will allow you to sleep at night, it's gonna be able to deploy, you can put it away, it's gonna be nice and smooth, that blade will be perfectly center if you've done it exactly right, and you can, you can feel good about it. Guys, that's gonna be pretty much it for this demonstration. I felt like I should do this because I, I mean, I have stressed over this. Believe me, this is definitely, you're not alone if you're stressing over this. It's very frustrating to get a new knife and it's not centered, right? Now, for a lot of you, this will work for knives that have just come off center over time and you try to adjust the pivot, right? And it just doesn't come back to center. A lot of times things just come out of whack. So this will, um, this will, uh, you know, for a lot of you, this will work just fine. But that's gonna be pretty much it for today's demonstration. 
Um, let me know if you uh, tried this and it worked for you. And like I said, if it didn't work for you, uh, it may not work for everybody or you might actually have an issue with your knife so you should contact your retailer. Um, but uh, if this was helpful or you enjoyed this in any way, shape or form, please leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do of course have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on this Metal Complex logo right here and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching everybody and have a great day.